linear inequalities, and absolute value inequalities. Solving an inequality is the process of finding the set of numbers that make an inequality a true statement. Interval notation is used to represent subsets or small collections of real numbers. There are different types of intervals, and we're going to discuss the various different types of intervals. The interval from A to B represent the set of real numbers between, but not including, A and B. So we, if we start at one number and go to another number, it's all the numbers that are in between those numbers, but those numbers at the ends are not included. So this notation here would be called interval notation. This notation is called set builder notation. And then we can also graph our interval on the number line. So this is what it would look like on the number line. If A and B are two numbers on the number line, then the interval from A to B with A and B not included would have a parenthesis on the number A, a parenthesis on the number B, and it would be all of the numbers in between those two numbers on the number line. Now, interval notation is always going to use um, either brackets or parentheses at the ends, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, if the numbers are not included, then you're going to see parentheses. So that's why this interval is, it starts at um, whatever this first sign is, whether it's a parenthesis or bracket, that's telling whether or not that particular number is included. Well, A is not included, so we use a parenthesis in front of A, and our interval goes to B, and B is also not included, so we close it with a parenthesis. And then set builder notation is this notation right here, and set builder notation always starts with this brace or squiggly bracket and an X and then a bar. And the way that we read this notation is x such that. So set builder notation always starts with that, those symbols, and this is how we read it, x such that. So this is x such that a is less than x which is less than B, and then we close it with a squiggly bracket. So this part inside, that's going to change depending on what our interval is, but this squiggly bracket, X such that, and we close it with a squiggly bracket or a brace, um, that's always going to stay the same. Okay, so that was an open interval where the two numbers are not included in the interval. A closed interval uses uh, these brackets instead of parentheses um, to represent a closed interval. So if those numbers are included, if it's going from one number to another number and those endpoints are included in the interval, then we use brackets in the interval notation. And then we also use those same symbols on our graph on the number line when we're graphing um, our interval on the number line. So if this is our interval from A to B on A, we would put a bracket, it, it, since, it's not, since it is included, we put a bracket on that number, and since B is included, we put a bracket on that number, and again, it's all the stuff in between. Now, for the set builder notation, this right here, like I said, we always start with the squiggly bracket, x such that. Now, this time it's a is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to b. So let's close the squiggly bracket. So what's different between that and the one that we did in the open interval? Let's look back. In the open interval, my inequality symbols were just less than. In my closed interval, 
my inequality symbols are less than or equal to. Because like I said, those numbers are included in the interval. So my x or my numbers could also be equal to those endpoints. So that's why it's less than or equal to instead of just less than or uh, just greater than. So the closed intervals in the interval notation use brackets. And the closed intervals in the set builder notation have the equal to sign under the inequality. And then whatever the symbols are in our interval notation, we also use those on the number line. Now an infinite interval means that our interval goes to infinity in at least one of the directions. So in an infinite interval, whenever it's going towards either positive or negative infinity, infinities are always going to use parentheses. So you will never see, okay, this is our interval here. A is going from A to infinity. Well, I would never write it like this, from A to infinity, and then use a bracket. That's never right, because the bracket means that the number is included. Well, we can't include infinity as a particular number. So it never uses parentheses. It always uses a bracket when we write the notation. Okay, so since this is going from a number A to infinity, we just have one number, A, on the number line. Now, because there is a parenthesis by the number A, that means that A is not included. And then it's going to positive infinity. So on my number A, I'm going to use a parenthesis, and then I'm going to positive infinity, so I'm going to go to the right, and then I put an arrow on the end of my graph because it's going to continue going forever because it's going to infinity. Um, then for my set, bu set builder notation, like I said, we always start with squiggly bracket x such that, and then we tell what's happening to x. So if it's not going from one number to another number, our next symbol after our line is going to be an x. And then we tell what's happening with x. Either x is greater than or less than the number. Well, since we're going to positive infinity, x is going to be greater than a. And then, of course, we close with our squiggly bracket. Another type of infinite interval is a closed infinite interval, where it still goes to an infinity, but the other end is um, closed. It goes to a number, and that number is included. So it looks like this in interval notation, where we're going towards infinity, and like I said, whether it's positive infinity or negative infinity, we close that end with a parenthesis, and then the number that it stops at, if it's included, we're going to close it with a bracket. So if we look at that on the number line, here's our number, and that number is included, so on the number we're going to use a bracket, and of course it's going to face the direction that our line is going to go, is going to go. Um, like in the previous one, we had a parenthesis, and the parenthesis is curved towards the direction that the line is going. Well, here we have a bracket, and it's opening towards the direction that the line is going to go. Our line is going to go to the left because we're going towards negative infinity. And then, of course, we put an arrow on the end because it continues because it's infinity. And then our set builder notation is this squiggly bracket x such that x is less than or equal to b. Less than or equal to because that number is included. So to summarize, parentheses indicate endpoints that are not included in an interval, and brackets indicate endpoints that are included in the interval. Now, now we're going to express each interval in set builder notation and graph. So these intervals are given to us in interval notation. And I always like to graph first and then write the set builder notation. All right, here I have labeled my number line. And now we're going to graph this interval 
Well, the inter interval starts at negative 2, and negative 2 is included in the interval. So on negative 2, I'm going to put a bracket, and it goes to 5. 5 is not included, so I put a parenthesis on 5, and then I just connect those points. Now to write set builder, set builder notation, we start with squiggly bracket, x, such that. All right, so we're just going to go from left to right. We start with negative 2, and then we're going to, now it's always a number, whenever it's going from one number to another number. We're going to have the number, we're going to have x, and we're going to have the last number, which is 5. Now, if you'll notice, x is in between those two numbers. So x is greater than negative 2, but it's less than 5. So if x is greater than negative 2, we're going to put it, put our inequality in that way. And then the same thing with the 5 because x is less than 5. Now, sometimes we have less than or equal to. When do we have less than or equal to? Whenever we have the brace um, or the bracket. So not the parenthesis. So that means on negative 2, since we have that bracket, we're going to put our equal sign underneath it. But on the number 5, since it's got a parenthesis, it's not included. It's just, we just use the less than symbol next to the 5. Okay? So remember, we just said that um, brackets mean that it's equal to or included. Parentheses mean that it's not equal to or it's not included. Okay, so for the next one, we have uh, our interval is going from 1 to 3 and a half. So the number 1, because there's a bracket next to it, then that means that 1 is included. And we're going to put that same symbol on the number 1. And then 3 and a half, there, we don't have a mark on our number line for 3 and a half, but we know that it's between 3 and 4. So between 3 and 4. That is included, so again, we're going to use a bracket. And then we just connect our two points. All right, then for our set builder notation, squiggly bracket x such that, and we go from one number to the next, one is, and then we're going to put less than or equal to, because it can be equal because it's got a brace or a bracket, x, which is, again, less than or equal to 3.5 and then we close it. Alright, for our last interval, our inter interval is going from negative infinity to negative 1. So we know that we're going to have an arrow on this line and it's going to go to the left because we're going to negative infinity. And it's going to go from negative infinity to negative 1 and negative 1 is not included, and so since we see that parenthesis uh, uh, next to negative 1 in our interval, we're going to put a parenthesis on our negative 1 on the number line, and we're going to draw a line going to the left with an arrow at the end because it's going towards negative infinity. So then to write our set builder notation, we start with a squiggly bracket, x such that, and like I said, if it's not going from one number to another number, it's going to be x such that x. And we tell what's happening with x. Well, if we compare x to negative 1, x is less than negative 1. Alright, so x is less than negative 1. And then we close our set builder notation. Intersections and unions of intervals an intersection is a set of elements that are common to both set A and set B, and it's denoted with this symbol right here that looks like, to me, an upside-down U. Um, one way that I remember that that symbol goes with intersection is if you think about the word like this, intersection. Um, that upside-down U also looks like an N, so intersection. Now, um, the intersection means that the, it's the, the elements that are in both A and B. So it's got to be in both of the sets. 
So another way that we can remember that um, is the word and it has an N in it and uh, that, that symbol goes with intersection and it means and. Union is the set of elements that are in both sets, A or B. So anything that's in either set is included in the union. All right, so the way that we can remember union and the symbol that goes with it is this. Union looks like a U. And like I said, that's anything that, that's in either set. Now to graph the intersections and the unions of intervals, we graph each interval and then determine if we're looking for the intersection or the union. If we're looking for the intersection, we're only going to take the part of the two graphs that overlap or that they have in common. If we're looking for the union, we're going to take both graphs and just put them together and anything that's in either graph combined is going to be our new um, interval. Alright, so here's an example. We're going to use the graphs to find each set. So in our first example, we have the interval from 1 to 3 intersected with the interval from 2 to 6. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph each one of these separately. Um, my actual solution, or in this case the intersection of the two graphs, is what I'm going to put directly on the line. The other things that I'm graphing above and below the line, they're just sketches of each separate interval so that I can see what parts are going to overlap. Okay, so the first interval goes from 1, so I'm going to say it goes from right here to 3, and those are included, and I'm going to connect those two. Okay, there we go. And then my other interval goes from 2 to 6. So it starts at 2 and it goes to 6. And I'm going to connect these two. Okay, now since we're dealing with the intersection of these two graphs, I only want the part, uh, my solution or my intersection is only going to be the part that overlaps. So if I look here, it's only overlapping from 2 to 3. So that's going to be what I put on my number line. That's going to be my answer. Okay, so it's just going to go from 2 to 3. But how do I know what symbols to put on those numbers? Well, we're going to look at the graph that ends on that number. So on number 3, this top graph is what ends on number 3. And it on, on 3, it's got a bracket, so that's what I'm going to put on 3 on the number line. And then 2 ends on this number line, and it has a parenthesis, so that's what I'm going to put on the number 2. I put a parenthesis on 2. So that little part from 2 to 3, that is my actual solution or my intersection of those two separate intervals. So my set, this set would just be from 2 to 3. Okay, and then for the next one, we don't have the intersection, but we have the union of the two intervals. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing that I did um, previously. I'm going to graph these separately. So my first interval is from 1 to 3, and those numbers are included. So from from 1 to 3, and then my next interval is from 2 to 6, and those are not included. Okay, and then this is the union of the two graphs. So we just put these two together and we include every point or every number that is in either graph. So the lowest point that's included in either of these two graphs is 1. And the highest number is 6. And then again, we use whatever line ends on that number 
to determine what type of endpoint we use. So for the number one, the line that ends on that number is right here and there's a bracket on one. So I'm going to put a bracket on my line. And then for six, this line ends on six and it has a parenthesis on six. So we're going to close it with a parenthesis. So that is the union of the two lines. And if I were to tell what the interval is, it would be a bracket and it goes from one to six and we close it with a parenthesis. All right, now we're going to talk about solving linear inequalities. A linear inequality can be written in one of the following forms. Um, AX plus B is either less than zero, less than or equal to zero, greater than zero, or greater than or equal to zero, which if you'll notice looks like a linear equation. The only difference is instead of it being equal to zero, it's got one of these inequality symbols. So what happens when you add, subtract, multiply, or divide each side of an inequality by, a po by positive and negative numbers? Well, when you add or subtract, it works the same way as it would in an equation. But when you multiply or divide, if you're multiplying or dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to remember to reverse the inequality symbol. All right, let's solve and graph the solution set on the number line of this inequality. 2 minus 3x is less than or equal to 5. So we solve an inequality just like we would an equation. We just have to remember that one rule about multiplying and dividing. So the goal is to isolate the x, to get the x by itself on one side of the inequality symbol. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides first. Okay, and then I need to divide both sides by negative 3. All right, so since I'm dividing both sides of the equation by a negative, that means that I need to reverse or flip the inequality symbol. Right now, the inequality symbol is less than. Oh, it should be less than or equal to. So I need to flip it to say greater than or equal to negative 1. So if I were just dividing by a positive 3, I wouldn't do that. I only do it whenever I'm dividing by a negative number. Okay, so now let's graph this on the number line. So if I want to graph this on the number line, on the number negative 1, would I use a bracket or a parenthesis? I would use a bracket because it's greater than or equal to. So if it's got that equal to sign underneath it, and that's one way that I remember. So if it's got the equal sign underneath it, that's that, that uh, you know, if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, that straight line underneath our inequality, that reminds me of the straight lines in the bracket. So if you see that straight line, we know that we're going to use a bracket on our number line. Okay, so on negative 1, I'm going to use the bracket. And since x is greater than negative 1, I'm going to go to the right because the numbers that are greater than negative 1 are to the right. Another way, as long as your variable is first. If you get confused about what direction you need to make your arrow go for uh, an infinity, again, as long as your x is first, these inequality symbols look like arrows. Like this, to me, looks like an arrow going to the right. So I draw my arrow to the right. So for example, if I had x is less than 2, well, then on my graph, I would draw my line going to the left because uh, this looks like an arrow going to the left. But if you know how to read these inequalities, um, then that's not a problem. But remember, you can only use that shortcut or that trick if your variable is first. If it's not first, you can flip everything and then follow the arrow. Okay, let's solve and graph the solution set for this inequality. Again, we're going to um, solve it just like we would a linear equation. And I'm going to get all the x's on one side and all of the numbers on the other side. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides first.
and then I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. That gives me a negative 4x is greater than negative 16. Okay, so again, I'm going to have to divide by a negative number. So I need to divide both sides by negative 4. And since I'm dividing by negative, I need to flip the inequality, and I get x is less than 4. Okay, so on the number 4, would I use a bracket or a parenthesis? Since it's x is just less than, note you don't see that line underneath it, then we know we're going to use a parenthesis. Okay, so, and then x is less than 4, so the numbers less than 4 are going to go to the left. And that's what my solution would look like on the number line. If there's no solution to an inequality, then the solution set is the empty set. And we can notate it like this. It looks like a zero with a slash through it. If an inequality is true for all real, all real numbers, then the solution set is from negative infinity to positive infinity or x such that x is a real number. So it's just all of the numbers. Now, how do we know if it's one of those? Well, let's look to see what happens when we solve this first inequality. So to solve this inequality, the first thing I would do is distribute the 3. And I have 3x plus 1 is greater than 3x plus 2. So if I want to get my x's together, I would subtract 3x from both sides. But what happens when I do that? They both cancel. And I'm left with 1 is greater than 2. Okay, is that true? Is 1 greater than 2? No, it's not. So, if your variables cancel out and you're left with numbers and it's a false statement, then that means there's no solution. Alright, let's look at the next one. Well, here again, we need to get the x's together, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And when I do that, my x's cancel, and I'm left with 1 is less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, I just caught a mistake that I made in the, the one above. If you saw the mistake, um, we'll go back and correct it in just a minute. Let me finish this problem. Okay, so I have 1 is less than or equal to negative 1. Um, is that true? Is 1 less than or equal to negative 1? No, it's not true. So that means no solution. Okay, let's back up to the one before. What did I forget to do? I said that I needed to distribute to both terms. Well, I didn't do that. So when I distribute the 3, I get 3x plus not 1, but 3. Oop. Okay. So that makes this a 3. And now I have a true statement. 3 is greater than 2. So if your variables cancel out and you have a true statement, then that would be all real numbers. So in interval notation, it would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. In set builder notation, it would be squiggly bracket x such that x is a real number. Okay, all right, so true statements is all real numbers. False statements, no solution. Compound inequalities are two inequalities written as one statement. For example, if we have negative 3 is less than 2x plus 1, and 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to 3, we can put those together as a single compound inequality like this. So this, if they have a component that's the same, then we can put, put the two inequalities together. If we're going to solve a compound inequality, then our goal is going to be to isolate the variable in the middle of the two inequalities. 
And to do that, we have to perform the same operation on all three parts of the inequality. All right, so let's solve and graph the solution set on the number line. Okay, to solve this uh, compound inequality, we want to get the x by itself in the middle. So this x right here, we want to get it by itself in the middle of the inequalities. So to do that, if just think about what you would do if it were just a single um, inequality. Well, what we would do first would be subtract the 3, right? Well, the only difference is we have to do it to all three parts. So I'm going to subtract 3 here, subtract 3 here, but then I also have to subtract 3 here. Okay, so that leaves me with negative 2 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than 8. Okay, and then to get the x by itself, I would need to divide by 2. Do I need to flip the inequalities? No. I don't need to flip the inequalities because I'm dividing by a positive 2. If I were dividing by negative 2, I would flip both of those inequalities. Alright, so now I'm left with negative 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4. Okay, so that is my solution. And now I'm going to graph it on the number line. So we're going to start with the negative 1. Would I use a bracket or a parenthesis on negative 1? Well, since I see this straight line underneath my inequality symbol, that means I'm going to use a bracket because there's a straight line in that bracket. On the number 4, what would I use? Well, since I don't see the straight line, then I know I'm going to use a parenthesis. Okay, so I put a parenthesis on the 4. And x is in between the two. So I just connect those two endpoints. To solve inequalities with absolute values are a little different. If you'll remember when we were solving absolute value equations, we always had to solve it twice. When we took it out of the absolute value, we would set it equal to the positive and to the negative solution. So it's kind of the same thing whenever we're dealing with absolute values. We're going to have, when we take it out of the absolute value for an inequality, we're going to set it equal to the positive and the negative. But depending on what direction our inequality symbol is facing, um, that's going to tell us whether or not our interval is connected or if it's separated. So if we have an inequality like this, um, the absolute value of x is less than 2. That means that the distance of x from 0 is less than 2 spaces. So that means, just like this, it's, it could be negative 2 or it could be positive 2, but it's in between those two. It's less than 2. Whenever we have the absolute value of x is greater than 2, then we know that it, it can't be this part in here. It's not less than 2. It's greater than 2. So it's these two separate parts. So that may, may be a little confusing. What you need to remember is if our symbol is less than, that means, well, less than or less than or equal to, then that, our connecting word is going to be and. If our symbol is greater than or greater than or equal to, then our connecting word is going to be or. Again, um, and is the intersection or is the union of the two um, intervals. Okay, now, uh, another thing that I need to point out is we determine that once the absolute value is by itself on one side of the equation and it has to be on the left side of the equation. So it has to be first. Our absolute value has to be first um, and by itself on one side of the inequality or the inequality symbol. Okay, so if we look at this inequality, it's by itself and it's first. So we can go ahead and determine what our connecting word is going to be. If we look at this inequality symbol, it's less than, and less than means and. 
So we know that that's what our connecting word is going to be. Now let's take our absolute value and separate it. So we're going to write it one time just like it is. X minus 2 is less than 5. And then, you know, if we were doing an equation, we would do x minus 2 equals 5 and x minus 2 equals negative 5. Well, with our inequality, there's a little bit of a difference. We do x minus 2 is less than 5, and x minus 2 is, we also have to flip the inequality, is greater than negative 5. So for inequalities, we not only change the sign of what it's equal to, but we flip the inequality. Okay, and then we work these two out. Okay, so if I'm going to work out this first inequality, I'm going to add 2. And I get x is less than 7. And then for the other inequality, I'm adding 2. And I get x is greater than negative 3. All right, now we got to graph it. Okay, here's my number line. So I'm going to do my little sketches. Um, x is less than 7 would look like this. Um, since it's just less than, not less than or equal to, I would have a parenthesis on 7 and x is less than 7, so it would go to the left. And then for x is greater than th negative 3, um, it would start at negative 3 and it would go to the right. Now, this is where my connecting word is important. Since it's and, it's only going to be the stuff that overlaps. So, my two number lines overlap from negative 3 to 7. Okay, so that would be my solution. So just for a little bit of practice, let's go ahead and write our solution in interval and set builder notation. If I wrote it in interval notation, I would start with the parenthesis, and it goes from negative 3 to 7, and I close it with the parenthesis. To write it in set builder notation, squiggly bracket, x such that, and we're going from one number to another, so it's negative 3. Since it's a parenthesis, it's just less than, not less than or equal to, x, which is less than 7, and then I close my set builder notation. Okay, here's another one. Now, before we can determine our connecting word, before we can take the stuff out of the absolute value, we have to get the absolute value by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 20 from both sides. And that gives me negative 3 times the absolute value of 5x minus 2. is greater than or equal to a negative 39. Okay, so then I need to divide, and I am dividing by a negative 3. So see if th that's going to flip my inequality. So see if I had looked at my inequality first, it would be different than what it actually needs to be because I'm flipping it. Okay, so when I flip this, then I get the absolute value of 5x minus 2 is greater than or equal to, and that would become a positive 13. Okay, so now that the absolute value is by itself and it's first, it's on the left side, I can determine what my connecting word is. So my inequality is greater than, greater than or equal to. So greater than or greater than or equal to, the connecting word would be or. That means that that's the union, so I'm going to include anything that's in either graph on my number line. Okay, so now let's take our absolute value out of the absolute value and write it twice. Um, so I would have 5x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 13 and 5x minus 2 is flip it less than or equal to a negative 13. Okay so I'm going to solve these. I'm going to add 2 to both sides 
and I get 5x is greater than or equal to 15. And then divide by 5. I do not flip the inequality because I'm not dividing by a negative. So x is greater than or equal to 3. And then for my other inequality, add 2. And I have 5x is less than or equal to negative 11. Divide by 5. And x is less than or equal to a negative 11 over 5. But that's really hard to graph on the number line. So I'm going to change it to a mixed number of 2 and 1 fifth. That's a little easier to graph. Okay, so let's put this on the number line. So for the graph of x is greater than or equal to 3, on the number 3, that would be a bracket. And greater than would go to the right. For x is less than or equal to a negative 2 and 1 fifth, so a negative 2 and 1 fifth is going to be a little bit to the left of negative 2. And again, we use a bracket. And then it's less than, so it's going to go to the left. Now, since our connecting word is or, then everything that's in either graph is going to be included on in our solution. So I'm just going to bring this down and put it on the actual number line. And that's how I would graph it. Now, just um, so you know, if, for example, my connecting word had been and, and this is what my graph looked like, uh, the, these two things right here. Well, if my connecting word is and, and I don't have anything that overlaps, then I have no solution. Because and, or the intersection, is only the part that overlaps. So, if nothing overlaps, that would be no solution. But that's not the case here, because... My connecting word was or, it's the union, so I use everything that's in either graph. Now the way that we would write this interval, um, I, I always start from left to right whether I'm doing interval notation or set builder notation. So my interval starts at the left. Well, what's the leftmost part of my, my number line on the graph? It's negative infinity. So I'm going to start at negative infinity, and remember infinities always use parentheses. And then it goes to negative 2 and 1 fifth. And it stops. So I put a bracket there. And then we pick back up at 3. And it goes to positive infinity. And we would close that with a parenthesis. But we have to connect these two. And since they're connected um, as the union of the two, or then we're going to put that symbol in between our two sections of our graph. Alright, for this last example, um, we have 18 is less than the absolute value of 6 minus 3x. Well, remember I said that before we do anything, our absolute value has to be by itself, which this is, but it also has to be first. It needs to be on the left side. So before we can do anything here, we need to flip our absolute value uh, inequality. So if I flip it, I'm going to put this absolute value on the left side. But that means I also have to flip the inequality and then put 18 on the right side. Okay, so now my inequality is in the, the right format. And since this is um, greater than, we know that the connecting word is or. Alright, so let's solve, or let's um, write our inequalities twice. Take it out of the inequality. So we write it one time just like it is, and then we do it another time. And what do we have to do? Flip the inequality. Is that it? No, nope, we have to change the sign of our number. Okay, and let's solve these. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And 
and then I divide and I'm dividing by a negative. Okay, so since I divide by negative three, I have to flip my inequality and I get x is less than negative four. All right, for my other inequality, subtract six and I have negative three x is less than negative 24 divide by negative 3 again I'm dividing by negative so I flip my inequality and I get a positive 8 alright again my connecting word since this was greater than is or um, and then now we need to graph on our number line alright if I look at my two inequalities separately x is less than negative 4 so on negative 4 that would be a parenthesis and it's less than negative 4 and then x is greater than 8 so a parenthesis greater than 8 and since my connecting word is or it's the union so it's anything that's in either one so I just put this on the graph and that's my solution um, and again, my interval would be from negative infinity to negative 4, close the parenthesis, unioned with 8 to infinity.